Well, we're reading from Judges chapter 7. So we'll be starting at Judges chapter 7, verse 1, and going through to chapter 8, verse 28. Judges chapter 7. Early in the morning, Jeroboam, that is Gideon, and all the men camped at the spring of Harod. The camp of Midian was north of them in the valley near the hill of Moreh. The Lord said to Gideon, You have too many men. I cannot deliver Midian into their hands, or Israel would boast against me. My own strength has saved me. Now announce to the army, Anyone who trembles with fear may turn back and leave Mount Gilead. So 20,000 men left, while 10,000 remained. But the Lord said to Gideon, There are still too many men. Take them down to the water, and I will thin them out for you there. If I say, This one shall go with you, he shall go. But if I say, This one shall not go with you, he shall not go. So Gideon took the men down to the water. There the Lord told him, Separate those who, who lap the water with their tongues as a dog laps from those who kneel down to drink. 300 of them drank from cupped hands, lapping like dogs. All the rest got down on their knees to drink. The Lord said to Gideon, With the 300 men that lapped, I will save you and give the Midianites into your hands. Let all the others go home. So Gideon sent the rest of the Israelites home, but kept the 300 who took over the provisions and trumpets of the others. Now the camp of Midian lay below him in the valley. During that night, the Lord said to Gideon, Get up, go down against the camp, because I am going to give it into your hands. If you are afraid to attack, go down to the camp with your servant, Pura, and listen to what they are saying. Afterward, you'll be encouraged to attack the camp. So he and Pura, his servant, went down to the outpost of the camp. The Midianites, the Amalekites, and all the other eastern peoples had settled in the valley, thick as locusts. Their camels could no more be counted than the sand on the seashore. Gideon arrived just as a man was telling a friend his dream. I, I had a dream, he was saying. A round loaf of barley bread came tumbling into the midnight camp. It struck the tent with such force that the tent overturned and collapsed. His friend responded, This can be nothing other than the sword of Gideon, son of Joash the Israelite. God has given the Midianites and the whole camp into his hands. When Gideon heard the dream and its interpretation, he bowed down and worshipped. He returned to the camp of Israel and called out, Get up! The Lord has given the Midianite camp into your hands. Dividing the 300 men into three companies, he placed trumpets and empty jars in the hands of all of them with torches inside. Watch me, he told them. Follow my lead. When I get to the edge of the camp, do exactly as I do. When I and all who are with me blow our trumpets, then from all around the camp, blow yours and shout, For the Lord and for Gideon. Gideon and the hundred men with him reached the edge of the camp at the beginning of the middle watch, just after they had changed the guard. They blew their trumpets and broke the jars that were in their hands. The three companies blew the trumpets and smashed the jars. Grasping the torches in their left hands and holding in their right hands the trumpets they were to blow, they shouted, a sword for the Lord and a sword for Gideon. While each man held his position around the camp, all the Midianites ran, crying out as they fled. When the 300 trumpets sounded, the Lord caused the men throughout the camp to turn on each other with their swords. The army fled to Beth Shittah, towards Zerah, as far as the border of Abel Meholah, near Tabath. Israelites from Naphtali, Asher, and all Manasseh were called out, and they pursued the Midianites. Gideon sent messengers throughout the hill country of Ephraim, saying, Come down against the Midianites and seize the waters of the Jordan ahead of them as far as Beth Barah. So all the men of Ephraim were called out, and they seized the waters of the Jordan as far as Beth Barah. They also captured two of the Midianite leaders, Oreb and Zeb, they killed Oreb at the rock of Oreb and Zeb at the winepress of Zeb. They pursued the Midianites and brought the heads of Oreb and Zeb to Gideon, who was by the Jordan. 
Now, the Ephraimites asked Gideon, why have you treated us like this? Why didn't you call us when you went to fight Midian? And they challenged him vigorously. But he answered them, what have I accomplished compared to you? Aren't the gleanings of Ephraim's grapes better than the full grape harvest of Abiezer? God gave Oreb and Zeb, the Midianite leaders, into your hands. What was I able to do compared to you? At this, their resentment against him subsided. Gideon and his 300 men, exhausted, yet keeping up the pursuit, came to the Jordan and crossed it. He said to the men of Succoth, Give my troops some bread. They are worn out. And I'm still pursuing Zabar and Zalmanah, the kings of Midian. But the officials of Succoth said, You already have the hands of Zebah and Zalmana in your possession. Why should we give bread to your troops? Then Gideon replied, Just for that, when the Lord has given Zebah and Zalmana into my hand, I will tear your flesh with desert thorns and briars. From there, he went up to Peniel and made the same request of them, but they answered as the men of Succoth had. So he said to the men of Peniel, When I return in triumph, I will tear down this tower. Now Zeba and Zalmana were in Karkor with a force of about 15,000 men. All that were left of the armies of the eastern peoples, 120,000 swordsmen had fallen. Gideon went up by the route of the nomads east of Noba and Jogbeha and attacked the unsuspecting army. Zeba and Zalmana, the two kings of Midian, fled, but he pursued them and captured them, routing their entire army. Gideon, son of Joash, then returned from the battle by the pass of Perez. He caught a young man of Succoth and questioned him, and the young man wrote down for him the names of the 77 officials of Succoth, the elders of the town. Then Gideon came and said to the men of Succoth, Here are Zeba and Zalmana about whom you taunted me by saying, do you already have the hands of Zabar and Zalmana in your possession? Why should we give, give bread to your exhausted men? He took the elders of the town and taught the men of Succoth a lesson by punishing them with the desert thorns and briars. He also pulled down the tower of Peniel and killed the men of the town. Then he asked Zabar and Zalmana, what kind of men did you kill at Tabor? Men like you, they answered each one with the bearing of a prince. Gideon replied, those were my brothers, the sons of my own mother. As surely as the Lord lives, if you had spared their lives, I would not kill you. Turning to Jethur, his oldest son, he said, kill them. But Jethur did not draw his sword because he was only a boy and was afraid. Zabar and Zalmana said, come, do it yourself. As is the man, so is his strength. So Gideon stepped forward and killed them and took the ornaments off their camel's necks. The Israelites said to Gideon, Rule over us, you, your son and your grandson, because you have saved us from the hand of Midian. But Gideon told them, I will not rule over you, nor will my son rule over you. The Lord will rule over you. And he said, I do have one request that each of you give me an earring from your share of the plunder. It was the custom of the Ishmaelites to wear gold earrings. They answered, we'll be glad to give them. So they spread out a garment garment, and each of them threw a ring from his plunder onto it. The weight of the gold rings he asked for came to 1,700 shekels. Not counting the ornaments, the pendants and the purple garments worn by the kings of Midian or the chains that were on their camel's necks. Gideon made the gold into an ephod, which he placed on Ophrah, his town, in Ophrah, his town. All Israel prostituted themselves by worshipping it there, and it became a snare to Gideon and his family. Thus, Midian was subdued before the Israelites and did not raise its head again. During Gideon's lifetime, the land had peace for 40 years. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.